Welcome to the Stanley Street Daily Unpack of the Giro and Welter. My name is Alex Clements. I'm here with Campbell Flakemore. We're here after the day that finally came. We'd been talking about the Giro getting hot. It was always going to get hot the next day and then the next day and then the next opportunity and then the next opportunity and finally it came. The Stelvio didn't disappoint Campbell. Yeah, it got thick real quick, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, like we talked about yesterday with the parkour on Saturday being changed, the Izawad and the Angel being removed, the Stelvio became even more important. And the riders saw that and it blew to pieces on the Stelvio. And, uh, I mean, look, we've got a position now where we've got three riders within 15 seconds and uh, – you know, even even Almeida, he, he's he's not out of it yet. So Pet Pillow Bibao had a good day. Um and yeah, I mean the, the two strongest climbers that we saw at uh Pian Cavallo were were at it again. So um mm. super stage. Yeah. We had a point at the Stelvio where Rowan Dennis was right in the front. Jai Hidley was in his wheel. Uh Terry Gagenhart was there and um, and Ben O'Connor was on the back. Three yeah. Australians at the front of the race, mm. yeah. of the biggest climb of the tour. It was, um, it was good. It was pretty cool. Rowan Dennis just had the ride of his life. It was pretty cool. The um, the team race somewhere v Ineos, the two yeah. heads of state going at it. Pretty much from the bottom of the Stelvio too. Once things got busy, once they got on that switchback section, um, we saw Chris Hamo pick it up for Team Sunweb. Or well, Sam Uman, Chris Hamo, that, that kind of duo before uh, Ineos really turned the screws and, and did some serious damage to the group. They clearly had plans to do damage. They had Swift and Ganna up the road, maybe thinking for, that, for the downhill of the Stelvio and that little bit of valley. Um, but the break didn't get too much of a gap with with Sunweb picking it up pretty early. Mm. But then, uh, yeah, when when Rowan when Rowan went to the front and just and just carved it up, and uh, I mean, I don't think he or anyone really expected him to be able to do that whole climb, do the descent, do the valley, and then swing off at the, the bottom of the valley. It was one of the one of the most impressive rides as a, from a domestic I think we've seen for for some time and. Uh, probably Rowan's best climbing performance as well. I think maybe two or three years ago, maybe four or five years ago, there was a little bit of hope that maybe he could turn into to a GC rider. Um, he had a couple of cracks at it, but I don't think it was for him. But I think we saw yesterday the, the quality that he can dish up in the climbs, just the big gear, just muscling it, just the big diesel really wound up and, you know, people were thinking, oh, is, is Teo going to attack? But I think it was probably the best thing for, for Rowan to stay there, to pull that uh, margin out in the valley. And then they arrived at the bottom of the climb with with a minute 50. So I think I think they played it well. In the end, I also think Sunweb played it well. A mm. um, bit of talk should have Jai stayed with Wilco. I, I, think, I nah. think the right decision was made. No. Nah. Just back on Rowan too. Like he was shelving full saying nipply. The all the favourites going out going out the hoop on the biggest climb of the tour. And Rowan's just there just dieseling his way up the climb. Just yeah. s- s- easy as you want. Yeah. I'm Very just impressive. ripping the race in half. It was super impressive. And then it paid off in spades uh once they got to that valley too. Yeah. That section I, I, where we saw Wilco having like 40 seconds at the kind of bottom of the downhill, bottom of the next climb, a minute 40, just yeah. in that valley section. Um, there were times there where I thought Wilco's wheels were falling off. Hmm. Did you think that it was it was done and dusted there at one point? It, it looked like he'd lost his head. You know, the team car was heading up to Jai and there was a, a, little, bit of, a little bit of waving of hands. He didn't look like he was too impressed that Jai had, had continued up the road. But uh, kept his cool, kept digging in and, and limited the damage and, and came away with the pink jersey on the day. But, uh, 
a little bit of a crisis averted, I think, for Wilco. Oh, yeah. I, I think it was super impressive. Like really, really strong performance from Wilco. That could have – he's in pink jersey, but that could have easily been him three minutes off the pace. Yeah, kept his head. Um, kept it – like that point where he's come he, – so he's lost time in the valley. So that's demoralizing knowing that the guys you're racing are not doing the tap. Roland's doing the turn and you're riding by yourself. Then he's got onto the bottom of the climb. Bill Bow and Fulsang have come past him. And that was the point that I thought it was yeah. wheels off. He's going to lose five they've, minutes. They've come past him. Like he was absolutely crawling. But then to regather, he had 14K to go. So it's still a long way of climbing. It's not easy. And let's not forget, he didn't get dropped at the top of the Stelvia. He got dropped halfway up it. Yeah. Like there was a lot of climbing before that where he had to control things. Um, yeah. I, I, Kelderman was in consideration of where he was, how he performed, where he was at. He was super impressive. But the guys on the front. Rowan, Rowan's still the right of the day for you? Yeah. Rowan's still the right of the day. But Wilco... Wilco got the mental performance of the day. <laughs> what did you think about uh, Jai struggling with the rain jacket at the top of the Stelvio? Clearly not from and, the Rabobank development team. Yeah, Wilco, yeah, yeah, Wilco yeah. straight on. He, he did struggle to zip it up, though. Um, the Ineos <laughs> boys, I think, played it well. They they chucked their jackets on with about 2K to go when, when they were, you know, had enough time to do it. Mm. Um, so that was smart business by them, but yeah, I, you know, it was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? He was downhill, was all playing on his head. Um, but yeah, I think it was only three degrees at the top of the the climb, so it was essential to get some sort of warmth on for for the downhill. It was very messy. Mm. Like Ineos played, as you said, Ineos played it perfectly. Get the jackets on early, no stress, plenty of time, and as soon as as soon as um, as soon as he kind of missed that first time, it's freezing cold. You're trying to ride tempo with Rowan and put a rain jacket on at not high speeds either. It gets that slow that it starts to get a bit tricky. It's wet. It's cold. You're under fatigue. It's stressing about the downhill that's coming. It was pretty messy. Mm, uh, I mean, as Adam, as Adam, Adam Phelan says on um, the Facebook He's no, uh, he didn't come from the Rabo development squad, notorious for their uh, skills in putting the rain jacket on. If, uh, it was, if was it, if was it jumbo? Oh, yeah, true. Um, and did you see Wilco just rip his jacket off after he couldn't get the zip up as well? I didn't see that bit. No, I was so he, on, the, he, on the downhill, I was on the old 15 second sort of skip. So I probably he, missed um, he ripped his jacket off about halfway down. Hmm. Well, for yeah. Jai, it was okay because he was sitting in the wheels, but Wilco, you're on your own. You're pulling. You just got yeah. this jacket flapping. Mm. Get it out. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about the two guys in the front, Alex, because um, I think we, we discovered on stage 15 that those two were probably the strongest in the race. Teo found himself sort of in between a rock and a hard place, um, mm. kind of had to pull. Of course, Jai wasn't going to pull for several reasons. Um, yeah. There's a bit of talk that Teo maybe wasn't going full gas, thinking a little bit about the stage. But uh, what were your thoughts on how on how all that played out the last eight k? I think, um, yeah, I think. Well, that's where Team Sumo have had the advantage. They had the guy there, um, which was essential. Otherwise, I I tend to agree that Teo probably wasn't going full noise. That there was a little bit left in reserve. Do you and, think he was maybe a bit worried about getting completely dumped by Jai? Yeah, potentially. Um, but I, d I don't know why. I thought, I thought he would have just gone wild, just like, all right, it's just a time trial now. Rowan's yeah. taken to the bottom. I've got time. I know, like, because surely he's got in the back of his mind, he torched Tinley in that TT. Like, he's going to take time in that TT. Yeah. Why not just go wild on that climb? Ball breaker effort to get to the top. Not saying that it was easy. Yeah. But like there was a bit of turning around, talking to Jai, you're gonna do a tap. Of course he's not gonna do a tap. No. But like no. there is no there was no no circumstance unless Jai completely lost his mind and his radio fell out of his ear. He's not doing a tap. 
<laughs> he seems like he seems very loyal, doesn't he, Jai? He wants to yeah, he wants to do the right thing. And even now in the press, he said, um, ah, it's still all for Wilco. He's in the pink jersey. I think there was a there was a quote on um, on Cycling News. He was he was asked like, what you know, what does this mean? And he just says, mate. <laughs> in the quote, it says, mate, <laughs> he's in the pink jersey. I'm going to put my ass on the line for him. So yeah. Um, I think that shows where where Jai is at, and I think I think today was probably the hardest one. I think you know, Sestriere three times still super tricky. There's still a lot that can happen, but I think now it's going to be quite hard for for Ineos to to take time. Um, and Jai Jai is always going to be there. Jai is always going to be that insurance policy, just being able to follow yeah. the wheels. Yeah, but, uh, and be a bit of a menace for the stages. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that that TT still looming. That's that's really good for for Wilco. But uh, yeah, super super day. Yeah, but yeah, I think for me, Teo probably just got to be caught up in the moment. Whereas Jai was, he was all class. <laughs> he was think, so good. I think he had a lot left in the tank. He was unbelievable, Campbell. Um, just quickly, too, on your point about um, the quote, "Mate, it's all about it's all for Wilco." That was that was uber clear in the podcast we did with him. Like every time I kind of not pushed him, but asked the question. So, like, is there an option for you to go wild? He's like, "Nah, nah, I'll, I want to make the podium, but it, this is for Wilco." Like that, that that was the rest day. So that, that's mm. that's still strong. But what a perfect situation for him, for Sunweb, for their directors, for their management to go, all right, beauty. Jai can sit on here. He's still doing the team thing and he's going to pick up a stage. Yeah. That was perfect. I reckon they would have been sweating, though, a little bit at the bottom of that last climb when when Wilco got past. He had to do the whole valley by himself and he had to do the whole climb. I reckon there would have been a little bit of sweat there because – you know, Jai versus Teo in the in the final TT. It's probably swinging towards oh, yeah. Teo thirty seconds. Um, yeah, and I'd written but, Wilco off. Yeah, like watching yeah. it. Mm. Um, your boy Joao finally came mm. unstuck for good. Yep, yep. Not 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 properly for good. You know, he didn't lose that eight or nine minutes and completely blew up. But uh, what is he at now? 216. 216. So probably probably past it, you'd think. But I think he, he's going to try something on Sestri Air. Yeah, can he just go he's wild? Gonna, I think he's going to have to just force the others to follow. He's going to he's going to do a good TT. Um, but he, he just he just seems like the sort of guy that just won't give up. We saw that on stage 15. We saw that last night. He's going to keep digging in, and at only two minutes in the Giro, it's all possible. Mm. Um, just f- touching on this question from Jesse on Facebook: what what words would have been exchanged between Jai and Teo? Kind of touched on it before. I think Teo wanted Jai to do a tap, um, which he had all the right to say, "No, thank you." Yeah, I'm just going to sit here, and I think it's also. A little bit of payback for stage fifteen when Teo exactly. sat on Teo sat on the whole climb, dumped him in the finish. Um, Jai's here saying, um, also Teo did exactly the same to me a week ago. So if he wants me to come through, he should have rolled a turn a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and then I think Teo said, you know, we're all friends. It's tactics. So there's no there's not a whole lot of animosity there. But again, Alex, uh, in the sport, we're talking about. Degent doing turns for Sargon a couple of stages ago. You just you just never know when you might need a little favour here and there. So it's it's good to have friends in the bunch. But uh, yeah, I think Jai was completely within his rights to to go wild. And I was just speaking with a buddy earlier, and um, the stage where Lucas and and Tao got up the road, and Tao sat on. Maybe now he's thinking I should have done some some work there, and he, he might be in the pink jersey today. But <laughs> you can't be thinking too much like mm. that in cycling. Yeah, yeah, we we weren't even talking about Tao before that stage. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Should we touch on Wilco now just a little bit more? No, we've talked sure. about him a lot. But there's a question here, Will from Andy, will um Wilco show enough to still make him the favourite for the race given his TT strength? Shows how important time trialling is in for GC ambition. Yeah. Just a it's nice key. little thing to have up your sleeve. Yeah, a little bit of insurance. TT still looming. Yeah. But uh, Wilco and then we have Jai at 12 seconds and, and Tao the – the threat really at, at 15. So I, I think Sunweb will still be sweating. They'll still be sweating a lot because you, Teo's going to try something at Sestriere. What climb? We don't know. But I mean, Wilco, he's, he's just been thereabouts on the climbs. He hasn't looked, hasn't looked super. Probably, yeah, the, the third strongest in the bike race behind the two that we saw go to the finish last night. But, um, mm. They'll they'll be very very nervy. I still think for Saturday he can probably lose, probably lose thirty to forty seconds on that stage and still have a chance. But uh, he probably still is the favourite. No, uh, yeah, he's the favourite. Yeah, I think things have to go wrong for him to lose this. Taylor has to go wild, but. Yeah, I can't, I can't. Have you done much recce on how hard this stage is going to be now? Well, I think I think it's lost about fifteen hundred meters of climbing. So, yeah. I mean, it's, I think there's still four thousand meters of climbing. So, it's still super hard. Um, have they updated the the profile? They haven't updated the pros. I saw, I saw it the other day on somewhere. Um, but it's, it's just essentially the last climb three times. Um, still going to be tricky. Still plenty of opportunity for those that are feeling good. And if you're feeling bad, you'll you'll pay a, a hefty price. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's a good, a good point here in the comments. 250 Ks tonight. I'm not sure about the weather, but <laughs> that's just so, so Giro. So Giro. Yeah. No, no, get this, get this. Uh, so I, was trying to get, I was trying to get Chris Hamilton to come on the podcast today and he said, yes, mate, I'd be keen, but we've got a 7 a.m. departure tomorrow. He said, we left this morning. It was still dark, had to have breakfast on the bus, and now we've got 260K in the rain. What a day. <laughs> 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 That's filthy. Are we going to get those crosswinds that we never get in the north of Italy? If there's ever a day, they're going to come. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So, should we – anything else from last night? I don't think so. Do you think we're going to see a similar situation on stage 20? Yes. Tao up the road, Jai on the wheel, Wilco hanging on for dear life. Yep. I think we'll see something very similar. And throw throw Almeida and Bill Bow in there just for some sort of – just cause some problems well, early. That's, <laughs> see, and that's that's the piece that I – that skews to Tao because there, there is – if he can get some companions up the road, yeah, that's where it can work, mm. and that's where. What do you do with Jai Hindley? We I don't I, we haven't se I haven't seen this stage, but how much value there is. Like if he hasn't got boys and Wilco's on his own, and Tao's up the road with Almeida and Bilbao who are hunting for a podium. Very I think I think now, Alex. I think that. Somewhere they're so committed to Wilco that if I think almost at all costs, um, Jai stays with Wilco mm. to li to limit the damage in the TT because I just think based off the TT we had on stage fourteen, Tao is going to take time out of out of Jai. So really, the only reason why Jai wouldn't stay with um, Wilco is if he knows that he can put thirty seconds into Tao somewhere. So. I don't but, know whether he's got, got legs that good, but 
I think I think but, plan A will be all in for Wilco. Yeah, but you risk like Jai's there on the general. I know. And potentially could put time into Teo. And if Wilco blows up and you've got Teo flapping back there with him, you can almost hedge your bets in a in a manner. The good thing for us is that all will be revealed on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And uh, Teo must be taking a nice piece of confidence, confidence as Adam um, mentions on YouTube about how good Rowan's going. Yeah, yeah. And you just know, you just know that Ineos are going to they're going to cook something up. Something will be, mm-hmm. something will be um, being planned today um, for tomorrow. I mean, maybe even for today, they they might try something if we get that wind that we. I'm sure the riders don't want it, but as punters, bring it on. Filippo and Rowan just go on wild. Yeah. Mm. Tonight's stage. Um, pancake flat, super long. 250. Long way. Minimum five hours, five hours and a half minimum. In the rain. It says 250. Yesterday. And when you say 250, it's 259. Okay, so minimum five and a half hours. Plus, plus, sure, there's some filthy neutral through a town mm-hmm. that's 10K. Yep. That's, that's, oh. This would be mentally draining. Well, you saw from Hamo's message. <laughs> it's, it's a long day. <laughs> Setting off at 7. 7 a.m. start. You just pinned. Yeah, absolutely pinned. Your eyes are sewn together. Mm. Uh, can we go past Arno? No, we can't. We can't, can we? No. Just quietly, I punted on Jai last night as well. Did you? Yeah. What was the pain? No, no, I didn't actually put my money where my mouth is. I'm saying on the podcast, I selected Jai. I remember. I said Teo, so... We were close. I was um, close. You were close. Any other questions or whatnot on the Giro before we head to the Walter? As Peter says, I completely agree. 259 kilometers is so unnecessary. I think 159 would have sufficed. I think 59 would have been sufficient. Same result. Um, the welter heading to Spain. Yep. It was a bit hard to get excited about the welter after the watching the I watched the Giro straight off the bat. Welter, it's like, uh, yeah, okay. Did you watch it live? The no, I didn't watch it live in the end. No, I watched it both this morning. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, pretty much saw the GC boys just go wild again up up the final climb. Um, three back to back mountain uphill mountain finishes, pretty much mm. from the World Cup. Um, and it was the same the same guys going at it, just a slightly different order. Yeah, well, our tip Valverde wasn't there, which was a little bit of a surprise based off how well he climbed yesterday, day before stage two. Mm. But Dan Martin, when he when he arrives in this sort of nick, in this this sort of finish, is is absolute money for him. Carapaz mm. was looking super good. Ineos were doing the job. Got a nice little chop out from Froomey as well, which was good to yeah. see him get involved. Um, but yeah, uh, Dan Martin winning for Israel, which is good for them. I guess they won a stage with Dowsett and the Giro. Stage here with with Martin and then Froomey heading there next year, so building a little bit of bit of momentum for them. Um, but I mean Roglic and, and Carapaz probably looking the the two strongest guys for mine at the race. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a mix up as well because the guys that were struggling early in the piece, um, Poles and Vlasov, they both had had good days as well. So they were fourth and fifth. 
Um, and then Gross Schartner, he sort of came back to a little bit of form after struggling yesterday. So just these early mountain stages just kind of catch a few few people out and it takes a few days for people to to ride into a bit of form. So um, I think Max's tip was was Vlasov for second, so he comes back into the fold a little bit. But um, yeah, I think it's pretty clear who the, who the strongest boys are at the moment. Yeah, my, my second place tip... Um, Tebow's pulled out of the two. He's gone out of the world. He's, he's he's gone. Busted. Yeah. Yeah. It's not not a good not a good COVID year for Tebow. No, no, not at all. Um and Tommy D. Not that there was any question that he wasn't on the GC. He's definitely not on the GC now. So um I'm all in for Primos to hang on because that's all I've got left. Yeah. Um Esteban had a little bit of bad luck. Yeah, bike change times two. I think he was on. He was on a teammate's bike. It was way too big. It looked like he got close, and then the next clip we saw, he was on a bike that was fitting him. So two bike changes. He's had really good legs, and um, just a little bit of bad luck for him. But I think at the same time, he's only he's only a minute off the lead. So not a catastrophe, but definitely don't want to be losing time at at any point in these first couple of days. Yeah. Um, tonight, Ackerman, Pascal, yeah, for me, downhill stage, pretty much. Yeah, we climb for a little bit, but very, more very or less. similar to the Giro stage. Actually, they almost they all almost mirror each other. We started a thousand meters and finish at three hundred. Um, Did you want to go somewhere, someone else besides Pascal? Uh, yeah, well, I Sam guess Bennett, you go. Perhaps. I guess you go Sam Bennett. If you're not going Pascal, you go Bennett. Mm-hmm. On paper, should uh, be a, a straightforward day. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's really going to be anyone else that comes close to those guys. Pure quick Sean's guys. Gone, uh, Moschetti. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be some value around him, I reckon. Uh, well, you know, Max likes to sniff out the value. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Go. I, I think I personally think Ackerman is going to win. But um, I think, as Andy said, there'll be guys like Jasper Phillips and throwing himself around. Yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Phillips and he loves it. He loves it. Loves it. Loves a headbutt. Boxing on. That's, yeah. I mean, they're probably the three. I, I know we probably forgot about Phillips and just a little bit with the two big, big names there. But Phillipson's proven that he, he can sprint against against the best boys. And he, you know, for a young bloke, he's happy to to throw his head and shoulders in there where others probably won't. Mm. Yep. No, I don't. I don't mind it as a an outsider. I'm but I, I think... find, I'm trying to find Moschetti's. Uh, Palmares and there's a few little preseason friendlies um, on the Spanish islands in February that he's chalked up. But <laughs> heard it here a whole first. Lot of, a whole whole few, a lot of DNFs as well, though. Yeah, heard it here first. It's easy if he pulls that off, that'll be magic. Um, yeah, I think Ackerman. Ackerman is going to be hungry. He's got a lot to prove. Bennett's still riding high from the green jersey, but I think Ackerman's the one that's going. It's got the speed and hunger. He'll be still a little bit ropeable from uh, being DQ'd from Skelter Prize the other day. Yeah, I think he's he's going to be the one. I agree. That's all. Cool. A bit of an easy night tonight, and. Maybe we go head first again tomorrow night, Saturday night yep. with the Giro. That's gonna be that's gonna be a doozy. Yep. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks, Campbell. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And, uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow.